in this part 2 of our series about the devastation of the Netherlands after World War II, we focus on the city of The Hague, Den Haag in Dutch, and its neighboring coastal village Scheveningen. For centuries The Hague has been, and still is, the residence of the Dutch government, but it is not the capital of the country, which is Amsterdam. On the 29th of May 1940, the Hague became the headquarters of German rule over the Netherlands under the leadership of Reichskommissar Seis Inquart. He took residence at the Klingendal estate. After the war he was condemned to death during the Nuremberg trials. The Hague suffered badly from the spoils of war. Two major events can be named. One, the destruction of a large part of the city in order to become a fortification as part of the Atlantic Wall that stretched from the north of France to Norway. This German defence line was 2,685 kilometres long. 2. The accidental bombing of the Bezuidenhout quarters by the RAF. The Atlantic Wall was built with the aim to halt the potential invasion by the Allied forces. The section in The Hague also had as a purpose to protect the residence of Seis Inquart, which was located not far from the Dutch coast. In December 1941, the Germans started with the construction of the fortifications. However, the main part of the work was done in the autumn a year later. Approximately 138,000 people, nearly a third of the De Hague population, were forced to leave their homes, which were destined to be demolished in order to construct a 27 meter wide tank ditch, bunkers and many other fortifications. Here we see many residents leaving their homes with their most important belongings. Thousands of homes, three churches, a school and a hospital were demolished. Large parts of the De Hague woods were chopped down to the ground. Most refugees were housed in other parts of The Hague and surrounding towns and villages. About 1,000 Scheveningers found residence in the Achterhoek, in the east of the country near the German border. Others spent the rest of the war in Eelde, South Leiren, Culemborg and Ermelo. Dutch firms collaborated with the Germans to construct the Atlantic Wall. The second major catastrophe for The Hague was the accidental bombing of the Bezuiden Hout quarters. On the 3rd of March 1945, just two months before the war ended, 61 bombers consisting of 49 Mitchells and 12 Bostons of the RAF took off from Melsbrook near Brussels and from vitry en artois in liberated northern France to bomb German V2 rocket launch pads in the woods of The Hague. However, due to a navigation miscalculation, they dropped their bombs by mistake on this residential area. In total, 550 residents died and 350 were wounded. Thousands became homeless. Many homes were lost because of the inexperience of the local fire brigade with putting out home fires of this magnitude. This statue of Juliana van Stolberg and her five sons, erected in 1930 in the Bezuidenhout, can still be seen at the Koningin Maria Laan. He 
Here we see the so-called concrete dragon's teeth near the Hague's Malifeld, which are also part of the Atlantic Wall and aimed at hindering enemy tanks. From 1943 onwards, nearly all men in the age group of 17 to 40 were called up to perform compulsory labor duties in Germany, the so-called Arbeitseinsatz. Soon after the German surrender on the 4th of May 1945, these forced laborers started to return home. It involved approximately 270,000 men. Most of them were welcomed with open arms as seen here. However, not all experienced a warm welcome and felt that some people were treating them as collaborators and looked at them with disrespect and mistrust. As already mentioned, Scheveningen was converted by the Germans into a fortress. The entire beach was mined and around the famous Kurhaus many concrete bunkers were constructed. This footage of the courthouse is very rare and will probably bring back dear memories to those who recall what the Gevers Dynote plain and the street leading to the beach with on the right the sea aquarium was like before the massive redevelopment changes in the 1960s. Scheveningen's prison is notorious for its role during and after World War II. During World War II it served as prison for many captured Dutch resistance fighters, Engeland fighters and secret agents. It was nicknamed the Ordanje Hotel. In total it retained approximately 25,000 prisoners during the war. Many of these prisoners did not survive as they were executed in the dunes near the nearby Waalsdorper Vlakte. Immediately after the war, the prison's inhabitants changed to retain high-ranking German collaborators. It was here that people like NSB leader Anton Mussert, NSB'ers like Robert van Genechten, Max Blokseil and Karl Huygen, as well as the Hague's NSB mayor Harmen Westra, were held awaiting execution or sentencing.
Shortly after the war, Scheveningen started with the clearing of the mines beaches and the destruction of the bunkers and other fortifications. For the first time in five years, people could start to spend nice days on the beach again. In the next episode, part 3 in the series, we will focus on the terrible destruction of Rotterdam and its harbour. <laughs>